I've tried every format of poker there is. Tournaments at the World Series of Poker, televised live streams, grinding cash at the casino, online grinding. But the question I always get asked is could I beat their local 1-2 home game? Okay, it's not that serious, but I do get asked that question a lot. Home games can be tricky for people. Some people tell me, Oh, how am I supposed to win? Because there's seven people in the pot and I it feels like I'm playing the lottery. Or Billy Bob is playing four nine offshoot and he wrecked me with a full house on the river. How was I supposed to know he had that hand? So I'm gonna go over how I try to approach a home game and let's get into it. Welcome to the home game, AKA someone's dusty garage. Actually, sorry, Brian. It's, it's, actually, it's a very nice, I don't even have a garage. Anyway, I get trash, but I'm in the straddle, already $4 committed. The hijack raises to $10. A couple people call, and I'm just getting such a good price, so I call two, and we're four ways to a flop of nine, six, seven. The hijack continues for a whopping $10. Other two players fold, and it's on me. I feel like most players would bet bigger with an overpair, so I'm not sure what he's doing this with. I call to see a turn, which comes a three. Doesn't change much, I check. And again, he bets $10. Feels very weak, like he's just clicking buttons or something. I guess he could have a six or a seven. Part of me wants to raise, but it's very early in the night. I want to understand how he's playing, so I just call, and the river is another nine. I check it once more to him. He bets $15, I call, let's see what he has. He says, ace high, I show my cards, and I take it down. Next up, I have ace, king of diamonds in the cutoff and open to $12. It's only three times the straddle, but I figured there's no rake. Everyone else was opening small. In retrospect, this was so not the move. I should have opened to $20, something like that. Anyway, the big blind three bets to $24, a min raise, and it folds back to me. Typically, in lower stakes, people like to play very passively, so three bets are quite scary. The other thing is that when people do have monsters, they really don't want folds, so a lot of times I'll see people using small three bets, like this one, when they have aces, kings, queens. Ace-king suited is a very strong hand though, so I'm not folding yet. The question is, do I still try to go for the four bet, or do I just call? My gut is really telling me he's got a monster, so I just call and the flop comes queen six seven rainbow. He continues for $30 and I could fold here, but I do have two overs, a backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw, backdoor royal flush draw, and I'm in position. I call, but the turn is no help, it's another queen, he bets 50 bucks and I fold. Nice hand, probably had a monster, but no, seven deuce. Okay, I'm an idiot. I couldn't have been more wrong if I tried. Next hand. Now that I've been watching for a little bit, I see that people are playing decently wide ranges, but oftentimes they are telegraphing the strength of their hand with their pre-flop sizing. This is definitely something to look out for, in lower stakes games especially. When people are using multiple sizings pre-flop, pay attention to what that means. Typically, when people raise smaller pre-flop, they have weaker, more speculative hands, and when they raise bigger, they have the monsters. In this hand, there's a straddle to $4, the under the gun limps for $4, and then the low jack raises to $12. So this is a very small raise, especially with the straddle and the limper. The button just calls another sign of weakness, and I'm going to try to pounce on said weakness. I three bet to $60, mainly looking for folds, but that does not happen. Low jack calls, and then the button says, screw it, and goes all in for $81. I have to call for 21 extra, the low jack calls two, and we're three ways to a flop of ace, jack, five, two clubs. I have bottom pair, but what are you gonna do? The button's already all in, so I check. The low jack now goes all in for $200, and I snap fold. I was right about one thing, though. These players did not have strong hands preflop. Low jack shows ace, nine of clubs. Button shows four, seven of spades. So what's the takeaway? Well, if they're going to be calling my three bets light, I will remove the speculative portion of my three bets, like suited connectors, and mainly focus on three betting strong aces that have them dominated and big pocket pairs. Remember, in low stakes especially, your opponents will make a ton of mistakes. It's important to try to learn what those mistakes are and adjust. I added on a couple hundred dollars, so we are in for 500 total now, and I pick up ace queen of clubs in the low jack, which means it's time for the exploit quiz. Under the gun opens to $17 in your local one two home game. What do you do? A, do you call the $17? B, 
raise to $55, or C, fold like a little wuss. Well, we just talked about three betting with strong aces, so you might have picked option B. However, this is not a straddled pot. $17 is a very large open sizing. This guy's normally been opening around $10 or $12. Because of that, I do not like to three bet here. I'm on high alert, this guy has a monster. I'm not folding ace queen suited either, so I just call. Action folds to the small blind who three bets to $75. And surprise, surprise, under the gun goes all in for $400. I'm almost certain now he has a massive hand. I fold, small blind calls, small blind had pocket nines, and under the gun had pocket kings. So, good fold. Speaking of pocket kings, we got him. Under the gun plus one opens to $12. Cutoff calls, I'm on the button. It's a very clear three bet spot. I make it $45. But then the big blind comes out of the dark and four bets to 125. Okay, I mean, unless he has aces, this is an absolute dream spot for me. I have $375 total left in my stack. So the only question now is, do I go all in or do I just make the call? I think if I had aces, I might just call and trap. But with pocket kings, I believe the better move is to just go all in now. Let me know in the comments what you guys prefer, but anyway, I'm all in for 375 and the big blind folds. Uh, I mean, I'm a little bummed, but I do still take down $150 uncontested, so still good result. Moving on to a bit of a weird hand here, I have 10-7 off on the button, and you might be thinking, that doesn't seem like a hand you should play, Branson. And I would agree, it's not a hand I would recommend playing. However, this is a friendly home game, there is no rake and I have position. Also, we recently introduced the bounty, which means if you win two hands in a row, every other player owes you $5. Anyway, there's a straddle, low jack limps. I decide to limp just to get in the mix, possibly have a chance at the bounty. Small blind limps as well, straddle checks, and we're four ways to a flop of ace, king, three. Everyone checks to me. I have nothing, but I do have an opportunity. See, in a normal pot, it's very common for people to automatically check to whoever raised preflop. However, in a limp pot, there's no preflop raiser. So most people will just bet if they have a hand like top pair or better. Since no one bet, I figure no one has anything really good unless they're trying to trap. So anyway, let's just try to take this down. I bet $10. The low jack is the only caller and the turn is a four. He checks, I'm gonna continue the pressure. I bet 25 bucks and he folds, nice. So now I have the bounty, meaning if I win this next hand, everyone on the table owes me $5. I pick up four eight of hearts, not exactly the greatest hand. Low jack limps, it only costs $2 to limp to possibly win $40 in bounties. I'm convinced I limp, button limps, big blind checks, and we're four ways to a flop of king nine six two hearts. I have the flush draw, action checks to me. I could bet, but because I have the bounty, people are less likely to fold, so I just want to realize my equity, try to hit the flush, I check, but the button is not having that. He bets $8. Low jack calls, I call, and we're off to a turn which comes a four. It's not a heart, but at least I have a pair now. Low jack checks, I check, and this time the button checks back. Hmm. If the button had a strong hand, I don't think he would check, so that's something to keep in mind as the river comes a seven, still no heart. Low jack checks, I check, I'm just hoping my four is somehow good, but then the button bets $35. Low jack folds, actions on me, and this is strange. Like I said, when he checked the turn, I didn't put him on a strong hand. But now he bets rather big on the river, he is saying he has a very strong hand. So either he rivered a strong hand, like two pair or a gut shot straight, or his story doesn't add up. And for me, when someone's story doesn't make sense, it's a good opportunity to try and hero call. I toss in the call and he shows queen eight. So I win with a four and I win 40 extra dollars in bounties. All right, enough shenanigans. It's time for a real hand. I pick up pocket tens in the big blind. Cutoff opens to $12. The small blind three beds to $40. Actions on me. And now this is a tricky spot. In general, in low stakes, I like to respect three bets. However, when someone from late position opens, the small blind should be three betting pretty aggressively. So if that's the case, I'm gonna put on pressure myself. I four bet to $120. The cutoff folds, but the small blind five bet jams for $400. And 
yeah, this is absolutely never a bluff in low stakes. I'm just gonna end up losing the $120. I fold, and the small blind indeed shows he had aces. What do you have, Brad? Show us one time. Oh. Wow, good morning. So the night is almost over now. It's been around four hours, and I get the one, the only, pocket aces, baby. I'm under the gun. I open to $15. The low jack three bets me to $50. He should have a pretty strong hand, so I want to make sure we get a lot of money in this pot now. I 4-bet to 125. He makes the call, and we're off to a flop that comes king for 5. Now, there's over $250 in the middle. I have 235 left in my stack. As the 4-better, I should normally be c-betting small on almost every flop. However, always look for exploits. I noticed that this particular player made a lot of bets when checked to. He's not afraid to bluff when he senses weakness, so let's give him some rope to make mistakes. I check, and sure enough, he bets $125. Well, if I had more in my stack, I might just call and let him continue to bury himself, but as is, I only have 110 more. I think he's gonna feel obligated to call with almost any hand he has, so let's do it. I go all in for 235 total. He makes the call, I show my cards, he shows pocket tens. We decide to run it twice and I hold on both boards. That being the last significant hand of the night. So in total, we're in for $500, out for $657 on a one-two home game. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.